Hello and welcome to The Deep Dive. This is brought to you by HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast, uh, your trusted source for HIV testing. We've got over 4,500 testing labs right across the United States. And today we're jumping straight into some, well, really groundbreaking science. We are. We're taking a deep dive into next generation therapeutic HIV vaccines. And this is a really critical distinction we need to make up front. We are absolutely not talking about the vaccines designed to, you know, prevent HIV in people who don't have it. No, definitely not. Our focus today is squarely on the potential of treatments for people already living with HIV. Exactly. We've gathered research notes, articles, lots of information, really from the cutting edge of this field. Mm -hmm. And our mission really is to unpack how these new approaches could, well, fundamentally change life for people with HIV, maybe move millions beyond need and daily medication. Yeah, think of it as kind of a quest for a different future for HIV care. One where managing the virus doesn't automatically mean, you know, a lifetime commitment to pills. Which, okay, that immediately brings up the question. Yeah. We have ART-T, antiretroviral therapy. It works incredibly well at suppressing the virus. So why do we even need these therapeutic vaccines? That's, yeah, that's the essential starting point, isn't it? Yeah. ART is revolutionary, no question. It suppresses the virus, often to undetectable levels. People live long, healthy lives, yeah. prevents transmission. Right, huge advancements. But, and this is the key thing the sources emphasize, it doesn't eliminate the virus from the body. It, uh, it lies dormant in reservoirs. Oh, okay. So if someone stops taking RT or even just misses doses, the virus can rebound sometimes really quickly. RT is fantastic management, but it's not a cure. Okay, let's unpack this then. So these therapeutic vaccines, they're designed to train the body's own immune system. Exactly. To control that virus that's sort of lurking, ideally without needing daily pills. Precisely. The goal is what researchers often call a functional cure. Now, this isn't about completely eradicating every single last trace of the virus. That's incredibly oh, difficult. Right, I understand. Instead, it's about empowering the immune system to keep the virus permanently suppressed, you know, below detectable levels, controlled by the body itself, even after stopping RT. Okay. The notes we review, they consistently call this the next best thing to full eradication. And today we're going to explore a few specific candidates that the research points to as kind of leading the charge in this functional cure quest. Yes. We'll look at AGT-103T, uh, the HTI vaccine, and HB500, and maybe touch on a few others coming up too. And these candidates, they represent quite diverse strategies, everything from gene therapy to um, engineered immune activators. It shows just how many angles researchers are trying, really, to tackle this complex virus. All right, let's jump right into these different strategies then. Where did the sources suggest we start? Which one stood out? Well, the research consistently highlighted AGT-103T, that's from American Gene Technologies. It was often described as a potential game changer, mainly because its approach is quite unique and, well, there are some intriguing early results. Okay, yeah, this is where it gets really interesting, I thought. It deviates quite a bit from what most people think of as a vaccine, right? This isn't just a shot you get. No, not at all. The sources describe it as a type of gene therapy. Correct. It involves taking a person's own CD4 T cells. Mm -hmm. Those are the immune cells that HIV specifically targets and destroys. Right. Modifying them outside the body using genetic engineering, basically to make them resistant to HIV infection and then infusing those modified sort of supercharged cells back into the person. So think of it less like a traditional vaccine teaching your immune system how to fight mm -hmm. and more like giving a specific type of immune cell a permanent built-in shield mm -hmm. and maybe even enhancing its ability to control the virus. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. And what was particularly fascinating in the research notes were the details from the early trials. Mm -hmm. They showed participants were able to stop taking art and importantly, maintain low or even undetectable viral loads for, well, significant periods. One source mentioned several participants stayed off RT and controlled the virus for over a year yeah. during the trial observation period, I mean. Over a year off ART. Yeah, which is a critical step. It helps validate that functional cure concept in humans. That is huge. Maintaining suppression off RT is really the key benchmark, isn't it? But something that complex, I imagine it comes with hurdles? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. While the pros are significant potentially durable, personalized response, mm. maybe eliminating daily RT. The sources were very clear on the cons too. Okay. This approach right now, it's very complex. It requires significant infrastructure. You need labs for cell extraction, the modification process, the infusion. Right, not simple. Consequently, it's also likely to be expensive and difficult to scale globally. 
at least in its current form. So incredibly promising in principle, and those early results sound great, but yeah, facing big logistical and cost challenges. Okay, let's pivot then. What about a different strategy mentioned in the sources? The HTI vaccine. Right, the HTI vaccine. Initially developed by AELX Therapeutics, now partnered with Gilead, HTI stands for HIVCAT T-cell immunogen. This one takes a more, let's say, classic vaccine approach, but with modern twist. And the key difference from older vaccine attempts is that it doesn't use the whole inactivated virus. That was a problem before, right? Exactly, yeah. Older approaches using inactivated whole virus were, well, problematic. This vaccine is designed to target only very specific, conserved parts of HIV. Conserved parts, meaning? Parts of the virus that are less likely to mutate and escape the immune system's detection. It's essentially teaching T cells precisely where to strike on the virus. Very targeted. And the research notes pointed out it's delivered using things like viral vectors and sometimes paired with mRNA technology. Can you just clarify briefly how that works here? Sure. The viral vectors, you can think of them as like harmless modified viruses or the mRNA tech. Uh -huh. They're used as delivery systems. They get the genetic instructions for these specific HIV targets into your cells. Your cells then briefly make these harmless viral pieces, show them to your immune system, specifically your T cells. Mm -hmm. This trains the T cells to recognize and hunt down any real HIV that has those same target markers. I see. Trials like ALIX002 and ALIELIX003, they demonstrated this approach is safe and it did successfully trigger the desired T cell responses. Basically, the body learned to recognize the target. So the body learns, but the big question, as the source has noted, is does that strong T cell response actually translate into people being able to stop RT and stay undetectable long term? That's the functional cure outcome we're looking for. That is the crucial next validation step. Absolutely. Yeah. The benefits are, well, this type of vaccine could potentially be easier to manufacture and distribute globally compared to something like the AGT cell therapy. Mm, Stability. And it targets those conserved vulnerable regions, aiming for a response that works against many HIV strains. However, the sources also indicated that, based on current research, it might need to be used in combination with other therapies to achieve that durable RT-free control. Uh, it might not be a standalone solution just yet. Got it. So different approach, maybe more scalable, but perhaps needs backup. Okay, what about HB500? That was another one highlighted. HB500, yes. That's a therapeutic vaccine from Hope Biomedical. This approach uses engineered HIV antigens. Engineered antigens. Yeah, these are specific proteins or pieces of the virus, but they've been designed or modified in the lab. The idea is to make them particularly effective at provoking a really strong immune response. It's like showing the immune system a kind of super antigen version of HIV that really grabs its attention. So it's not just showing the immune system a target, but showing it a target with like a giant flashing arrow on it. Huh. A bit like that, yes. The goal is to provoke a very strong, directed, and potentially long-lasting immune memory against HIV, particularly focusing on cytotoxic T cells. Those are the killer T cells. The sources mentioned early trial results are still pending for this one, but the potential key features are exciting. The engineered antigens aim for a robust immune response. They're hoping for long-term immunity. And importantly, it's being designed with the potential to work alongside, or maybe even in the future, without art. Hmm, interesting. If it proves effective and is simpler to manufacture and administer than, say, the cell therapy, that could offer a much more accessible option globally. And this accessibility and scalability factor is mm -hmm. something the research notes came back to quite frequently. Any successful functional cure really needs to be deliverable, not just in high resource settings, you know? Absolutely. HP500's potential compatibility with existing RT could also be a significant advantage perhaps allowing a gradual transition off medication if it's successful. Okay, so beyond these three main ones, AGT, HDI, HB500, the sources briefly mentioned a few other interesting candidates or strategies too, didn't they? Yes, yeah. definitely worth a quick mention. There's SAV001 from Canada. This one actually uses a killed, chemically inactivated whole form of HIV. Which sounds like the older approaches you mentioned were problematic. It does, but the research mentioned its development is focused on stimulating a specific type of broad immune memory. It's now being explored more for its therapeutic potential rather than just prevention. So a different angle on an older idea. Okay. Then you have things like VRC01 and VRC07 from the NIH. These are different, I get there, potent, broadly neutralizing monoclonal antibodies. Right, monoclonal antibodies. We heard a lot about those with COVID. 
How would they work in this HIV context? Yeah, similar principle in a way. Think of them like um, smart bombs for the virus. They are lab-produced immune proteins designed to stick to critical parts of the HIV virus, essentially neutralizing it, stopping it from infecting cells. So more like a direct attack than training the immune system. Exactly. The sources suggest these antibodies might be used, perhaps in combination with vaccines. Maybe provide immediate viral suppression while the vaccine trains the T cells for the long-term control. Yeah. It's like a multi-pronged attack strategy. Got it. And Moderna's mRNA 1644 was mentioned, too. That was initially for prevention, but now maybe therapeutic potential. Correct. It just highlights how these research pathways can converge and evolve. Mm. The mRNA delivery system, which is now very familiar from COVID vaccines, mm. is being explored to deliver instructions for HIV antigens, similar in principle maybe to the HTI vaccine, but mm. leveraging that specific mRNA technology. Right. The therapeutic potential is still dependent on ongoing trial outcomes, mm. naturally, but it really shows the dynamism of the field. Lots of different shots on goal. Okay. So pulling all this together, what does this whole landscape of therapeutic vaccines actually mean for someone living with HIV today? Why does all this you know, complex science matter on a personal day-to-day -day level? Yeah, this is really where the hope lies, isn't it? These vaccines, they offer a vision of a future where life doesn't necessarily have to revolve around remembering to take daily pills, mm -hmm. managing potential side effects, or you know, carrying medication whenever you travel. A life without that constant reminder, the logistical burden, and potentially avoiding like long-term exposure to art medications, which, while absolutely life-saving, can have cumulative effects over decades, right? Exactly that. It could mean reduced lifetime treatment costs, too and maybe greater autonomy and privacy by reducing the need for frequent clinic visits and lab tests that sort of signal HIV status. For the millions globally living with HIV, achieving a functional cure, it isn't just a medical endpoint, is it? It truly sounds like it's about reclaiming significant freedom, maybe reducing stigma, and just dramatically improving quality of life. It would fundamentally rewrite the experience of living with HIV, no question. Okay, so looking ahead then, what specific milestones or developments should someone following this field be watching for based on what we read in the sources? Well, a major one mentioned is a phase two results for AGT-103 to AT. Seeing how participants fare over a longer period off art, that will be critical data. Right, that long-term view. Also, watch for data coming out from combination therapy trials involving the HTI vaccine, exploring whether pairing it with other approaches actually improves those outcomes, gets closer to durable control. And global reach was mentioned too, expanding the trials. Yes, the sources really emphasize the importance of expanding these trials into diverse populations and geographic regions, places like Africa, Asia, Latin America. Why is that so crucial? Well, understanding how these therapies work across different genetic backgrounds, different viral subtypes, that's absolutely crucial if they're going to have a real global impact. Makes sense. And on the regulatory front, anything to watch for there? Keep an eye out for discussions around potential fast-track approvals, maybe expanded access programs. The notes mention that regulatory bodies, like the FDA, are apparently already in early conversations with several developers. Oh, really? Yeah, which suggests, you know, growing interest and momentum from the official side, too. So to sum it up, therapeutic HIV vaccines, they aren't a finished product yet. Not by a long shot, maybe? No, not yet. But the science is definitely accelerating, and they genuinely seem to represent a real path towards, well, rewriting the future of HIV care. I think that's fair to say. Candidates like AGT-103T, HTI, HP500, each with their distinct strategies, they really are leading the way. Their success could indeed usher in a world where living with HIV doesn't necessarily mean a life sentence of medication. This science is moving fast, and staying informed is really key, I think, for anyone touched by HIV or just interested in global health breakthroughs. And speaking of staying informed and taking action, if you or someone you know needs reliable, confidential HIV testing, knowing your status is always the first crucial step in this whole journey. Absolutely. For quick, affordable, and confidential HIV testing, remember there are over 4,500-plus labs across the United States. You can always find trusted resources at www.hivrntestguide.com. That's H-H-I-V-R-N-A testguide.com. Right. It's a straightforward way to get the information you need privately and efficiently. And for those who might be interested in potentially being directly involved, maybe helping to accelerate this vital research, helping find that cure faster. You can actually explore participating in clinical trials. Yeah, the most comprehensive resource the source has pointed to for this is clinicaltrials.gov. 
That's the official U.S. government site. Okay. Clinicaltrials.gov. And how would someone use that? You can search specifically for therapeutic HIV vaccine. You'll find detailed information there on studies that are currently open, maybe happening near you. It lists the specific eligibility criteria, who can join. Right. And it gives direct contact information for the research teams running the trials. And your participation, it isn't just about potential personal access to these, you know, cutting edge therapies down the line, although I suppose that's a possibility. It is. But what's particularly compelling here, I think, is that your involvement, the data from participants, it could directly help accelerate the research, mm. meaning it could potentially bring a functional cure to millions worldwide much, much faster. It's actually quite a profound way to contribute to global health progress if you're eligible and willing. 